It's October, which means I want to talk about another supernatural horror show that was overlooked when it first aired in October 2016. While recovering from burnout this summer, I rewatched Crazy Head, a little supernatural horror comedy that aired on E4. You're my kill of the night. The series was created by BAFTA winner Howard Overman, the creator of Misfits. Crazy Head was just the second show produced under Overman's new production house, Urban Myth Films, and was a joint production between Channel 4 and Netflix. Crazy Head was kind of set up to fill the void that was left when Misfits ended in 2013. The show centres on two 20-something-year-olds living in Bristol who have the ability to see demons that have possessed humans, and together they are destined to fight against them. Starring Cara Fearabold as Amy, I think most people know her for voicing Tracer from Overwatch. You know, the world could always use more heroes. And Susan Wakoma, who plays Raquel. At the time, I think she was most well known for her role as Cynthia on Chewing Gum. I'm generally always nervous. Oh, well, that's not good, is it? We'll soon change that. Oh, I don't want to change it. It keeps me safe. I'm Connor. I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> Crazy Head is a wild ride right from the start and it's so short so I thought it would be best for me to break down the first episode. The series opens up with a woman who's tied up and being dragged around while she begs for her life. It's all creepy and scary then the mood immediately switches up. Amy, I know that's you, that's my jacket. I said, you gave it to me. You're such a hypocrite. The gagged and bound woman is actually possessed and these two are trying to perform the weirdest exorcism I have ever seen on any show ever. You need to <gasps> piss on her. Not pissing on her. Well, then we might as well forget the whole thing because that is step one right there. <gasps> I want my friend back, you sick freak. <laughs> Jump cut to three days earlier. We first meet Amy at a doctor's appointment when she's coming off her medication that suppresses her hallucination, a prospect that she fears if it means that her hallucinations could come back. Next we meet Raquel at the club who is not so subtly watching and following a suspicious looking man. Amy's at that same club trying to have a good time with her friends, Suzanne, the one who was tied up, and Jake who is obviously in love with her. The man chases Raquel outside the club and Amy sees his face shift. Outside, Raquel is hiding from the creepy man and Amy steps outside to try and convince herself that what she saw was just another hallucination. But it wasn't. The man even notices her noticing him and attacks her and Raquel swoops in to save the day. Dickhead! Bitch! Yeah, that's right. You better run, asshole. Amy is taken to the hospital where she meets Dr. Callum, who seems nice, I guess. The next day, Amy goes back to the scene of the crime to try and make sense of everything that happened, and Raquel is there. Raquel then explains to Amy what she saw was in fact very real. You ready for this? They're demons. You're hilarious, really. Yeah, I know. It sounds like so much bullshit, right? Trouble is, there's a little part of you that knows it's true, jabbing away at you like a woodpecker or an amphetamine. Due to how their brains are wired, Raquel and Amy are among the few humans that can see demons hiding inside their possessed host. Raquel warns Amy that now she has a target on her back as demons don't like to be found out. Amy has a hard time believing all of it, especially after Raquel pinched her tip. Wait, what? Ow, what the fuck? Should have pinched your arm. Next time. Raquel goes home, she lives with her brother who is fine. And she's all sad and lonely. I don't know why I even try. She thinks I'm a freak. Don't say that. Amy's at work and while she's closing up, she's attacked by the same demon from earlier. Amy manages to get away and the demon is run over by Suzanne. Sensing that their vessel is dying, the demon jumps into Suzanne's body. Amy and Suzanne head home and the possessed Suzanne tries to finish the job. Amy manages to get away and meets up with Raquel again to understand what it means to be a seer. That's what the pricks call us. It's so lame. But I prefer... What? Demon hunter or kick ass hell bitch. Amy begs Raquel for help and she agrees to kidnap Suzanne and exorcise the demon from her body. Once again, they are attacked by some more demons and are rescued by another demon using telekinesis who seems to know Raquel. Hello, Raquel. It's good to see you. Oh, and remember Dr. Callum? Right, he's a demon, like the big boss of all the demons. So, yeah. 
Now here we are back to the beginning of the episode where Raquel and Amy are performing the strangest exorcism that I have ever seen and it's definitely somebody's fetish because come on now. I want to rip your clothes off and press on your teeth. Do you want to share something with the class, Howard? Anyways, the exorcism is botched and Suzanne dies. And that's episode one. Yeah, it was a lot. They throw a lot of shit at us with breakneck speed. The pacing for this show is really fast, with the beginning of each episode picking up right where the previous episode ended. And with just six 40 to 50 minute episodes, you could binge watch the whole thing in a single afternoon and feel like barely any time passed at all. Part of me wants to just be a girl who worked in a bowling alley. But then I met you. You made me realise I wasn't totally crazy. So now I am running towards the flames, head down, balls out. Amy's probably the more grounded of our two demon hunters. She's faced some hardships due to her mental illness and she just wants to be seen as normal and blend in. She doesn't have much of a romantic life because she doesn't want to be judged and is happy living a simple and normal life. But Amy is fiercely protective of her friends and springs right into action to save them. What? What? We're in the middle of something here. Go round. The better half of the dynamic duo, Raquel definitely marches to the beat of her own drum. She's half demon and has been fighting against demons for a very long time. So she's skilled and confident in her abilities. But this has been a detriment to her socially as Raquel never formed close relationships with anyone and it's not for lack of trying. Despite being this ball of bubbly energy, there's a sadness to Raquel. She's quite fragile and has been through an awful lot and she just wants someone to connect with that truly understands her. Jake is Amy's pathetically lovelorn friend and he is a fucking idiot. He's that whiny I'm stuck in the friend zone type of man. He's vulgar, says all types of just weird shit, like just truly weird shit. So sometimes if I've run out of toilet paper, I use sliced bread to clean myself. If I've run out of that, I use slices of ham. It's like a poor man's wet wipe. I'm sharing that with you. I really wish you had him. I'm certain the only reason why they put up with him is because he has a car and won't ask too many questions. And he will literally do anything that Amy tells him to do. Suzanne is Amy's best friend since childhood. She's outgoing, sexy, sweet. She does die in the first episode, but she comes back as a revenant and she's still a very sweet girl, despite the painful hunger for blood. In her defense, the only people she ate was some dickhead one night stand and she wants to use her new revenant status to do some good in the world. I won't feed on you, I wouldn't do that. I could find a, a pedophile or, or a rapist, some horrible lowlife scumbag. Just let me eat a Tyler is Raquel's sexy brother. He is so fine and so sweet and so oblivious to everything that's going on when it comes to the demon world. But he's actually really supportive. And listen, if girls stop liking having their nipples pinched, then we are both in trouble because that is my go-to move. He awkwardly starts a relationship with Amy because... Reasons? If it was just to see him shirtless, then okay, I approve. You know how sick I am of hiding in here, playing Dr. Feelgood to a bunch of perverts and freaks. Just once, I'd like to lose my shit and show them who I really am. Dr. Callum Waverly is the big bad of the show. He poses as Raquel and Amy's psychiatrist. He's in charge of all the demons and his big evil plan is to use Raquel to open the gates of hell to unleash hordes of demons into the mortal world. Callum can go from cartoonishly evil villain to messed up real world evil very well. And it just makes me wonder if Callum would have been the overarching bad guy if the show had continued. Then there's Harry. He's a mysterious man and Raquel's love interest. He shows up, he's weird, but nice and very suspicious. You know what they say, small bladder, small. They don't say that. No one says that. The series is definitely an acquired taste, I would say. Its raunchy humour is very reminiscent of Misfits, but has the awkward dorkiness that a lot of people have compared to Buffy, unsurprisingly. I don't have any spades. Not that I can see. This is about the best I could find. You want to dig a grave with spoons? Spoons. Well, big spoons. Serving spoons. It's not ideal, but... OK, it's totally ridiculous. Maybe they have some out back. I mean, every supernatural TV show featuring teens and young adults running around at night always gets compared to Buffy. 
It was a very influential show and it's highly likely that Overman was inspired by it as the human crazy head leans on the more quirkier side than Misfits ever did. The series centres a lot on mental health. It's right there in the name. The 2010s saw more talk of mental health awareness within the mainstream. Because Raquel and Amy can see demons, their abilities are attributed to paranoid hallucinations and they both have been treated for it. There's a stigma against mental illness and both of these women have internalised that. The nipple pinching and psychiatric unit is giving me some doubts. You think I'm crazy? They think you're crazy, apparently. I'm crazy, you're crazy too. You think I don't know that? The demon that possessed Suzanne in episode one even tries to gaslight Amy after just attacking her. Amy? What's happening to me, Amy? I'm scared. Why would I try and hurt you? Why would I do that? You tried to kill me. You wanted me to wear a belt with my pajamas, then you tried to strangle me with it. It wasn't you, you possessed. That's insane. Oh, God, you've lost it. Then there's Callum taking on the role as their psychiatrist, which is just evil. And not in the cliched evil doctor in a bedlam sanatorium type of way. It's much more grounded. Callum is abusing his position and power as a respected psychiatric doctor to manipulate his patients. In a lot of speculative media, the monsters that the protagonists fight are a metaphor for the ills of society. Here, Raquel and Amy are fighting their inner demons as well as other people's literal inner demons. They come to rely on one another as nobody else can understand what they're going through. They have found solidarity with one another. I remember when Randeep Singh died. Who's Randeep Singh? That's my dad's best friend. Dad used to tell me how they go camping together as teenagers, laying out underneath the stars, swimming naked in the lake. Are you sure your dad's not gay? So there's a lot of weird gay jokes, like not in a horribly offensive way, just like a, okay, do you want to share something with the class? Are you, are you gay? No. Ooh. Okay, it's cool. Well, if you and your girlfriend are done, we should get started. Are you getting in? Are you just going to stand there like a pair of lesbians? It's just cheese. We tell him we're lesbians. Lesbians who like it rough and dirty in a forest. Lesbians who like a pine fresh scent. We're in bed. We're snuggling. Is that, is that like spooning? Are you naked? Is she, is she naked? No, no one's naked. To top it off, Amy does kiss Raquel. So do you want to share anything with the class, Amy? That's your, that's your queer baiting right there. <laughs> Crazy Head was well received by critics back then and even won three Royal Television Society Awards for Best Sound, Best Design and Best On-Screen Performance by Susan Wakoma. But despite all of this, Crazy Head was destined for cancellation. The cast were even prepared for it and were told that the audience reception would not be there. Now, it's not like audiences hated the show. It's just that in 2016, the way people watch TV was changing. Viewership ratings in the UK were still being calculated and measured through traditional methods. In an interview with the podcast Another Round with Heaven and Tracy, Susan Wakoma talked about this. We knew very early on that there wouldn't be a second series. Why? Um, uh, because... How do I say this in a diplomatic way? You are among friends and family, girl. Nobody else will um, ever hear this. Listen, I t I'll tell you, it exploded on Netflix and that's where it found its audience and that's where it found its very loyal fan base. And I feel like on Netflix, so what I say by Netflix, I mean internationally, mm. is where you had loads of people. I had so many people come up to me or tweet me saying, this was the character that we wanted in Buffy. Like, this is the character yeah. that we wanted in Buffy. And I knew that it meant more internationally than it did. And I also had... A, <laughs> Can I say this? I also had a meeting at Netflix. <laughs> um, as the show was um, airing here in the UK and was told um, to sort of prepare myself to be a little bit let down by the UK, wow. I was told. By the UK's audience reception? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I was prepared. And this was in October. So quite a while ago. And, um, and I just think that with um, terrestrial channels here, they still rely on things like on view figures and overnights and that sort of thing, whereas Netflix don't and a lot of streaming services don't they operate in a different way and um and people's viewing habits have changed i don't watch think yeah i don't watch things <laughs> speak on it baby <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Sit on it yes 
Uh, <laughs> they know Netflix's numbers. <laughs> Babies be knowing. But like, people don't watch things live. I don't watch things live. Sure. And so if you don't watch it live in the UK with terrestrial channels, that means it doesn't get a second series. It's as simple wow. as that. Um, and so that was what's so heartbreaking was to see it air on Netflix and get that reception. And we're mm. already going, oh, we've missed it. We've missed mm. the boat. And Netflix were only sort of co-producing it. When looking back at the mid-2010s, I rarely watched anything as it aired live. When I still had Sky, I would watch shows through Catch Up or go on websites like 4OD. Just like Wakoma said in the interview, the show found its fan base when it finally reached Netflix two months after it finished airing on E4. Even though this was a co-production, Crazy Head was really built for Netflix. With only six episodes that seamlessly flow into the next, it made it ideal for an afternoon of binge watching. And with the open ending... Netflix and Channel 4 could have marketed Crazy Head as a mini-series or limited series, whatever people are calling it these days. So, do I think Crazy Head is worth watching today? I don't really know. I mean, like I said, it is an acquired taste. If you loved Early Misfits, maybe give it a go. I did enjoy my time re-watching it. It was fine for what it was and it can be a little cringy. Some of the dialogue could have benefited from some input. He knows nothing about women. He used to call mum's vagina a foo-foo. So embarrassing. Both of these actors are British Nigerian. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that looks were exchanged between the both of them when she had to say this line. To me, Crazy Head serves as such an interesting snapshot of how television was just six years ago. In such a short amount of time, viewing habits have changed so much. Anyways, this trip down memory lane has got me kind of vexed, you know. Stop cancelling fantasy and sci-fi series with black women leads. First Kill deserved so much better. It was a cute and fun show with interesting ideas and plots and things that were happening that I was getting really invested in, yeah? I was going to do a whole video about First Kill, but then Princess Week said everything I wanted to say about it. Bring that shit back now. Sci-fi, come and save the day. Hulu, to be, to be, to be. Will you answer the call and be the hero for us? Happy Halloween. I've been gone for a long time. It's been a wide gap since my last video <laughs> upload here. But I have been burnt the fuck out. I've been tired, sick, and sick and tired. And yeah, it's just been a mad one. But I've been here, there, and everywhere. I was on a podcast. Um, I talked about it in a community post, so check that out. I have a Patreon exclusive video out, exclusive audio episodes too. Yeah, the past few months have been a lot for me. Um, But if you haven't gotten some rest, go and get some rest. Go to sleep. Thank you to all my lovely patrons. Cheyenne Lynn, Haryana Hook, Kemi, Mariah, M. Zaid, Jewel Fins, Punk Rock Yeezus, Des and Hill Richards Campbell, Hyphenated, and Quinn. Have a safe Halloween. Have a happy one too. And sleep. I am still bad at outros. Yep, nothing has changed. Bye.